A welding gun is designed to make the same weld over and over again. They're programmed to accomplish a repetitive task with pinpoint accuracy. Production starts with the gun's electrode caps, which are made out of copper rod. The rod uncoils and travels to a forming machine with a series of punches and dies. Mechanical fingers move the rod from one die to the next. The punches drive the rod into the die cavities to shape it into electrode caps. The electrodes come in thousands of different shapes and are made in many different ways. To make this electrode, automated tools taper a thick copper rod at one end. Then a drill bores a hole in the other end for cooling water. Smaller electrodes are made of partially hollowed blanks. They shave down the blank so that it will be able to weld in small areas. They also shape it so that the electrode cap will fit on top. They use another drill to make an entrance for cooling water. The entrance intersects with the hollowed part of the cylinder. Then another machine bends the electrode into its final shape. Next, they make the shunt adapter. A worker uses a hydraulic machine to bend a copper bar around a die. He measures it to confirm that the dimensions are correct. A high-pressure water jet carves through a thick copper plate to create the welding arms. The water jet can precisely cut out the part without scorching the copper. At the next station, computerized tools shape a solid block of steel into a mount for the welding machine's motor. It's a substantial transformation. An employee bolts steel plates to the end of the copper arm. He places a washer over the plates and then tightens the bolts. He inserts the electrode in the other end of the arm. Then he places the cap on and hammers it in place. The worker uses a crane to move the second weld arm into place. He aligns the holes and joins the arms with a temporary metal pin. The transformer delivers electricity to the electrodes. A worker attaches the robot welding arms to it. He replaces the temporary pin with a permanent one. Then he bolts the arms to the transformer. Now the welding gun is ready for the motor. He joins the motor to the arms and tightens the bolts on each side. The mechanics of this robot welding gun are complete. Now they need to add the plumbing. An employee cuts plastic tubing and connects it to the welding gun. The tubes will supply a constant flow of water to the gun. Without it, the gun would overheat and the electrode tips could melt. He bundles some of the hoses and ties them together for neater installation. They test every robot welding gun to confirm that it's fully operational. This gun is a slightly different version than the one that was just assembled. The technician also confirms that the tips have sufficient force for a good weld. Too much force could damage the tips. Too little force would result in a poor weld.